The following training is sponsored by the Niagara Library System. We serve our member libraries in Niagara, Orleans, and Genesee counties. Please visit your local library homepage and use your library card to get access to streaming videos, downloadable music, audiobooks, ebooks, and even more from the comfort of your own home. Thank you. Hello. So here we are again, and I am into the chapter. Uh, it says here, Chapter 3 of Start with the Heart uh, is what it's called. And this is from the book Crucial Conversations, Tools for Talking When the Stakes Are High. I did one video about this. I uh, released it before. You can find it on the channel. Subscribe, and you'll get all the videos, which would be great. And this particular book, again, was written, as you can see on the screen here, by Carrie Patterson, Joseph Grenny. Um, Ron McMillan and Al Switzler. It's an excellent book. Got it from our local libraries. Check out your local libraries and see if they have it. I bet they do. Um, it's a really good book. So before we move on to chapter three, I do want to mention I have here a citation for uh, Victor Frankl's book, uh, Man's Search for Meaning, originally published uh, in the States in 1959. It was uh, published in uh, German in 1946. Uh, Viktor Frankl is a psychologist. He's a has his doctor degree and was a concentration camp survivor from World War II. Absolutely incredible book, well known, and of course we have Man Search for Meaning at our libraries as well. Check that out at your local libraries, but I'll leave our links uh, for our catalog in the description below. All right, on to chapter three now. The authors start chapter three of Crucial Conversations with this little guy in the yellow line. Speak when you are angry and you will make the best speech you will ever regret. And that was by Ambrose Bierce. Uh, and I thought the arrow was very apropos because it's true. Uh, you start here, you speak when you're angry, you're going to make the best speech you'll ever regret. And it kind of goes downhill from there. So. This quote starts the chapter, as I mentioned, and I have to say, it really is true. We need to get into the how of uh, dialogue, uh, remembering that we are the only ones in control of ourselves. We need to create a common pool of shared meaning, and the authors talk about this uh, in and around in the book, um, and then fill this pool of shared meaning with the help of all of the stakeholders in the conversation and keep the conversation fluid and freely moving and going. The pool of shared meaning is the birthplace of synergy, according to the authors, that's on page 25. Remember, synergy happens when the sum is greater than the total of the parts. So if you want to think of it this way, I made this little thing here and this shared pool which would be over here on this side of the screen you have words the words have meanings um, within the conversation the meanings are shared and then ideas are clarified as this happens you get synergy um, and as synergy happens you get more words more meanings more shared communication, dialogue, and it produces more synergy and hopefully produces buy-in by all of the stakeholders in the conversation. It's about dialogue. Okay, So where does, let me just scroll up here to the top. So chapter three, start with the heart. Well then where the heck is the heart in all this I've been talking about? Now scrolling back down again, start with the heart. The authors say, that is your own heart. If you can't get yourself right, you'll have a hard time getting dialogue right. That's on page 33 of the chapter. The first step to achieving the results we really want is to fix the problem of believing that others are the source of all that ails us. It's our dogmatic conviction that if we could just fix those losers, all would be better. That keeps us from taking action that could lead to dialogue and progress. Halting here for just a moment, I do really, really like that the authors say it could lead to dialogue. We can only do so much, but if we start with ourselves, we have a better chance of getting that log jam unstuck and moving along. Please remember, these are extremely fluid, fast-paced conversations, and I personally have never had a crucial conversation that I've actually handled well 
without some sort of practice or rehearsal time. These are the we need to talk times that I've initiated with loved ones. I have to be careful though because a lot of times in my mind I've already set out all the arguments and counter arguments and sometimes I can actually start the conversation angry with the person before I even actually talk to the person because I've been rehearsing. It's that deep breath moment, little bit of rehearsal and a lot of focus on getting your heart right as they talk about. There are things that have happened in my computer classes and with my workmates and a lot of times um, things just haven't gone very smoothly. It has literally taken me years of mistakes and apologies to get to a point where I finally can recognize a crucial conversation and uh, even with that experience, <laughs> I, I still mess up. I do apologize faster though. I figure I have to look at myself in the mirror. I gotta live with myself and I can apologize for the mistakes that I see that I've made and then move on from there. It's all I can do and um, it's a lot of what the authors talk about in chapter three on focusing, um, starting with your own heart. The authors go on to say that those who are good at crucial conversations maintain their focus in two separate ways. First, they're steely-eyed smart when it comes to knowing what they want. This is, again, crucial. They stick with their goals. And second, skilled people don't make fool's choices, those either or choices, those choices where both options are bad, but I can either be silent about it or I can just go along or argue and then everything gets log jammed again. Unlike others who justify their unhealthy behavior by explaining that they had no choice but to fight or take flight, the dialogue smart believe that dialogue, no matter the circumstances, is always an option. Now that was on page 36. I will also mention that one of the chapters talks about safety as well. So when they say it is always an option here, do take that this is all very fluid. It moves very quickly back and forth, up and down, and take that, you know, as as you should with a with a grain of salt. Okay? An absolute laser focus on what the goal is will assist you in any conversation. We cannot control the adrenaline dump we experience when upset, angry, or attacked. And that I talked about in the uh, first video, well, in the introduction, I will uh, link that in the description below. However, we can control our reaction to it. That is really the heart of chapter three, start with your heart. You control your reaction to that adrenaline dump, tr to whatever is going on. Viktor Frankl explores this idea in his amazing book, Man's Search for Meaning. I highly recommend it. Of course, our local libraries have it. And uh, he, being a concentration camp survivor, a psychologist and creator of logotherapy, but just he knows what he's talking about. I can't recommend the book enough. Uh, that's it for right now. So hope you enjoyed this. That was chapter three. Um, go ahead and check out the book from your local library and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.